Yeah, Every, all okay? Good, the start's silly anyway, so it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for stragglers to come in. So um, I'm Philip from Octopin Digital. Uh, this talk is gonna be a lot of case studies, a lot of little lessons learned, lots of projects, a few non-Drupal projects, don't hate me, a few Drupal projects, um, but I'm not gonna be showing any code or actual technical bits of how we've done anything. Uh, but if you want me to explain anything else after the call, after the call, after the thing, uh, just come and see, speak to me and uh, then we can share code, do all sorts of things. We're really open about sharing all sorts of things. So uh, it just, there's so much to go through. So if I start talking about, um, yeah, twig helpers and things, it will, uh, we won't get anywhere. Um, so, um, so before before we start, so I am originally from the Czech Republic, so it's really nice to be here in Prague. Um, I've not seen much sort of Czech stuff going on, so I thought we'd start with a little exercise. So here we go. Here's the Czech alphabet, everyone. So, um, so the Czech language is one of those languages that's known as a phonetic language. So it means that all the letters are always pronounced exactly the same way. So. Remember, if you learned how to speak uh, in when you when you first learned how to uh, how to read or speak, you went a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, etc. So it's just like that. Now, uh, what they did a few hundred years ago is they brought in a few extra characters to make things shorter. So they put these little accents on top of the letters. Then, of course, computers and keyboards came in, which ruined everything. But um, they've got a s with a, a c with an accent is a ch. Uh, a an s with an accent is a a sh, and a z with z with an accent is a j. So uh, we've got um, and also we've got long lines above things which make them longer. So we've got an I be which becomes an E. So it becomes E, A becomes A. So that's it. That's the Czech language. There are some really difficult ones with like R with accents, but I, this is a beginner's talk. So I thought as I'm billed as a beginner, then maybe, maybe we'll leave those out. So does anyone know what this is? Not quite. Anyone, anyone else who's not my team? It's an, it's an angel shark. So angel sharks are about two meters in size, 1.5 meters in size, and they're critically endangered. They live um, at, in the sand, and they sort of come up and attack things. They don't have to move to, um, to keep breathing. They're amazing animals. We've done, we're gonna talk about a project in a second, but most importantly, the reason we're all here is this is shark in check. So um, I'm gonna, now I've said z is a z. So uh, I'm going to count to three. You can just not do this if you don't want to. And you're all going to say what this is. So one, two, three. Sherlock. Sherlock, you can speak Czech. This is great. <laughs> Anyone can tell me what this is? Elephant, yeah? So this is a forest elephant. So. Um, I don't know if anyone has been involved in discussions about hot dogs, where it's like, is it a sandwich? Is it not a sandwich? And um, forest elephants are this weird thing where they're, they're not sure whether there's two types of elephant or three, so people argue about this a lot. So a forest elephant is, is one of these cases. We'll come across this sort of thing a bit later on as well, but most importantly, so in, I'm gonna count to three. This one's really easy. One, two, three. Slon. Okay, that's elephant. Next, okay, anyone tell me what this is? Turtle, okay, it's a turtle. So uh, turtles do this, uh, have this unusual thing that happens, which is when it gets hot, turtles are more likely to, or pretty likely to give birth to female turtle eggs rather than male ones. So as we're screwing up the planet, it's getting hotter. There's a lot of female turtles being born. And if you're like a tech conference, more women, really good idea. If you're turtles, not so good. So especially if people are already like stealing your eggs and you're endangered in other ways. So it's not very good for that. We've got, uh, we work on a turtle tracking project uh, that might come up a bit later. But uh, the reason we're here is here. So a z with an accent is a z. So one, two, three. Jelva, great, you can speak Czech, this is great. Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> we've got this, which is a, a stork. Yeah, it's a white stork. They come in flocks of about 
10,000 storks, and they travel about 12,000 kilometers. They're incredible animals. Uh, we worked on a bird, bird migration system using, um, using Drupal, uh, about education about bird migration and tags and that sort of thing, or not tags, reporting where you see birds. Uh, but here we go. So we've got a C with an accent, which is a CH, a, which is a R. Now, a little side note, if you're preparing a presentation, don't pick a font that doesn't have these characters, because then you end up looking typography awf awfulness like this, uh, but I tried. Uh, so one, two, three. Oh. Chop. Okay. And uh, anyone know what this is? It's a sunburst diving beetle. So we don't have any projects on these folks uh, because no one likes invertebrates. Uh, but uh, when I used to work at London Zoo, which I did before I started this company, I used to come and visit these folks all the time. I absolutely loved them. Uh, if they were the size of cows, then everyone would be terrified of them. No, everyone would think they're amazing, but they're like that small, so no one cares, and everyone just walks straight past. But they're amazing, graceful animals. So in, in check... One, two, three. Broke. Broke. OK, good. Thank you. So I'm, I'm Philip. I'm from a, that was fun, wasn't it? You can go now. That, that's, that's it. So uh, I'm from Octavin Digital. Uh, we are a, uh, an agency, a very small agency based in London. And we specialize in uh, wildlife conservation. So we basically do lots and lots of things for the conservation sector. Uh, we've all got some sort of background in it. Uh, we're a small team. We're very, very collaborative. We talk to our clients, work with lots of scientists and such. And um, another huge part of what we do is uh, we train lots of people up. We do lots of mentoring. Uh, we are really, like, I'm big on sponsoring diversity in, in all sorts of things. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a big part of what we do. So what we're... Um, uh, what I'm going to go through is have little slides with um, lessons and things to think about. So the first one is, uh, this is a really important thing. If anyone runs an agency or anything like that, I'm tired of us being so small and doing it so much. Others should do it a bit more. Invest in staff, convert people into developers. Rowan over there is a former biologist who came to work with us and now is a great front-end developer. And pay interns, don't exploit them. Yeah. Be, be, be good at things. So, yay. Um, so, um, what I'm going to, how am I doing? I'm doing okay. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to talk about is sort of how we got started with Drupal, how I got started with Drupal, and then go through lots and lots of case studies. So, I started um, using Drupal around 2008, something like that a very long time ago, and uh, the reason I got started was I was running an arts magazine. So I was starting an arts magazine, and I wanted to look up how to how to do things. And I didn't really know how to code. I knew some, like, Angel Fire, like that website that Dries showed yesterday with the flashing things. I used to do that sort of stuff. But this needs to be a bit more professional. So what I did is I... Um, I got Drupal installed, and I managed to do so much with no code. I just panels, views, all of this sort of stuff. So um, then, uh, then I got jobs, all sorts of things like that, and I worked at London Zoo. And we had a, a situation at London Zoo where uh, we had a membership system that was end of life, a CRM system, and the company that was doing it was hundreds of staff, massive company, was late and couldn't get, it, couldn't get it done. So I was there as a digital communications officer, and I thought, hold on, I know Drupal. I can build a membership system. This will be fine. So uh, I didn't know any PHP. I gave it a go. Now, did anyone in this room, I don't know how like, long Drupal developers we are, did anyone sort of use rules to build the most complex sites. Like, I'm not going to learn how to code, but I'm going to use rules and do these really complex nested, nested templates. It was amazing. So I kind of did this, and um, we got it working. So lesson here is, why write code when you can click a 1,000 buttons, drop downs, and check boxes instead? Which is like the unofficial slogan of Drupal, I think. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so we did this. And we launched it about six months after starting building it. It was membership, donations, fellowships, all sorts of things, hundreds and thousands of people, loads of money going into the system. And it was meant to be there for a few weeks. So uh, this one, next one's a cliche. It's a, it's a cliche, but it's definitely, definitely true, which is? There's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. So six years later, and they're still using it. The other company, CRM company, didn't deliver that product. 
we carried on supporting it. It only got replaced because we got commissioned to do a new donation system, building something else and, and, and other things. So, uh, so that's, a, that's a, a fun lesson. So um, one other project that's, uh, that's similar to this is um, around the same era. Uh, what I'm going to do is we did a really nice project here um, for uh, seal tracking. So not seal tracking, seal tagging, seal um, reporting. So uh, you, when you see a seal in the Thames, you report it. This is all sightings from this year. So we've got nice, nice little bubbles telling what, um, I have to refresh, let's see if we, um, like what people have, um, what people have, what stories people have done will come up, like I saw its head, that sort of thing, head popping up for a good 10, 20 seconds. This is all this year. So I love this site. I keep on wanting them to get us to update it because it's got some l old stuff on it, but they're not because it works and it was built in 2013. So it's just, it's one of these things that build things to last a long time. It's a really good thing. So uh, what I'm going to do next uh, from current slides. So. So, uh, next project. This is a Drupal one. So while I was uh, while I was at um, at London Zoo, uh, my team will laugh at this one. Um, we decided in two weeks, come together, and let's build a viral app of some sort, a little tiny thing where we would go. There are 300 Sumatran tigers in the wild. Let's see if we can map how many cats there are in London. Now we didn't cap it to London, unfortunately, and it came out. And I don't know if anyone knows cats plus internet, somehow <laughs> something happens. So it became this hit that we just didn't understand. International press, I was interviewed everywhere. Uh, we had 30,000 cats a day. It was just this ridiculous thing. And um, so we used Drupal, used views. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, the thing that happened was it couldn't cope. We, it was just, the server was just not coping. It fell apart. It was, it was just a bit of a total mess. And we had to take it down. So, because it was just too many cats. People in Taiwan seem to love it for some reason. Uh, my favorite thing from the, the story of doing it was I was looking through Twitter and I found someone randomly who didn't know anything about it saying that in, in America somewhere saying, the guy in front of me in math class is looking at some map of cats. And I was like, I've made it. Like the random person is like looking over someone's shoulder and seeing what we've done. So um, the thing here is it kind of was a disaster because uh, Caching, everything was really hard to do. Couldn't get the servers running. Uh, put me off Drupal for a bit. And um, yeah, it was a disaster. However, uh, lesson learned here is releasing a total mess is the best way to learn how to code. So uh, while it was running, I was trying to get it running before they shut, shut it down. I learned all about Drupal performance, about caching, about how to do, uh, how to do mapping a bit better, all sorts of things like that. So, it was a really, really good thing. So the lesson here is if you screw up yourself, it's, it's not a bad thing, but also let people screw up in a team if you run a team because that's how they're going to learn. And it's, uh, it's, a, yeah, it's a really, really good, uh, good opportunity. So um, uh, in contrast to this, just after this, uh, this project was done, um, we uh, did a, we spent about a year, contrast to the two weeks, building a game about tigers. So uh, this is, I'm not going to play it, don't worry, but we'll start. Uh, let's see if it runs. So this is one of my proudest achievements. It's a really fun exercise in being a tiger. Does all sorts of fun things. Oh, it's got, a, it's got a soundtrack that I composed, all sorts of stuff. Now, when this launched, we had CatMap, and everyone was thinking, oh, this is going to be another viral hit. It was going to be really good. Uh, everything's going to do, do so well. And uh, what happened was it kind of didn't. It didn't get much press. It was, it was, a, it was a little little thing. And I got a bit disappointed. And then I looked at the tracking that I put in. So I put in tracking depending on what people were doing, looking at uh, how many achievements they got, all sorts of things like that. And I realized that even though we haven't got like thousands and thousands of people going on every second, uh, what we had was people playing it for an hour. And it was when they play it for an hour, they learn all about tiger conservation. Because if you, if you don't learn about the tiger conservation, you can't complete the game because you need to know where to go. And so I thought, this is, this is amazing. It's a much better project, even though to the people looking at how many views that we've got, how, many press, how much press that we've got, it wasn't that, that big an achievement. So uh, the lesson here is 
a few people loving your project feels a lot better than hundreds liking it. So it's a, it's a really um, important lesson there. And I think we miss this a lot. We look at analytics and we think, oh, this is just, uh, th there's not many people here. We've only got a handful of uh, customers or a handful of people looking at things. But it's, um, it is really important to think of what people are doing, how people are engaging, because those people are the people that matter. And that when you're doing educa educational um, games and things, or edutainment, the best word um, in the world, uh, then it's, it's really, really important to see who's actually getting, getting stuff out of it. Um, so while we're on games, I'm just going to do a little um, side, um, side thing for another lesson, uh, which is uh, we did a... Um, a a fishing game, which was uh, translated into Danish and um, and um, Greenlandic, and it was about uh, fishing in Greenland. And it was again. Um, I'm going to call myself Alf. That's fine. And um, we had yeah, it was a it was a lot of um, a lot of stuff going through um, and um, fishing for shrimp, all sorts of things like this. Now, um, it's quite fun but I'm going to not play it because that's uh, there. But uh, what happened here was um, we went into schools and we spoke to, spoke to people, spoke to kids, and actually did workshops. We worked very closely with the scientists to work out exactly what corals we should show, uh, how often they should appear, like all sorts of things like that. And uh, it was a success. People still, we were doing interviews uh, the other day and people mentioned like this, this sort of game and some of the others, it's really like it, it did uh, get played by lots of people. Allegedly, when it got released, everyone in the organization was uh, just protect, pretending to be working while actually playing this fishing game, which was a nice success. But um, the lesson here is test with your actual audience. So even if it means a bunch of kids telling you you're doing it wrong uh, and you need to change everything, it is like if you don't do that, then what? who are you building it for? There, you might as well actually listen to the people. So that involves, actually, we do a lot of stuff directly speaking to our clients, and we speak to the conservationists, speak to scientists, and uh, it's very often they tell us things that mean we have to rewrite everything and suddenly go, okay, we have to completely change the structure. But they're usually right. They're the ones using it. You should probably listen to them. So, um, so that's, uh, that's uh, on that side. So good. Um, so what we did is um, we when when we when we started off um, when we started doing this sort of app and more JavaScript heavy things we got a bit uh, got a bit distracted uh, we did lots of um, front endy JavaScript lots of MongoDB all sorts of things and kind of forgot about Drupal for a bit and uh, then. Uh, because of the move to, to Drupal 8 from Drupal 7, I was a bit scared off because I knew Drupal 7 so well. And as lots of our, lots of our clients found, upgrading sites was expensive. So I went to the dark side and we spent a lot of years doing WordPress development. So, uh, so here's a little uh, story in that. So um, WordPress is a wonderful platform. And if you're building sites like this, so this is for Trillion Trees, it's got a little interactive map. So really, um, if you want to know how to do these curves or how we did these curves, speak to Rowan. It's the biggest nightmare in the world, but we did them. Uh, and it's one of those things where the client gives you a, or someone gives you a design. You think, yeah, we can do that. And then you realize it's actually really difficult to do. Um, so, um, so yeah, this sort of site, news stories, two or three administrators. It's got a bit of a survey inside it where you can, you, you can do, um, do some things to work out how your assessment is. Perfect for WordPress. Don't build this sort of site in Drupal. WordPress is a lot better for, for it. Then, however, it starts getting a bit more complicated. So you've got a site here, which is about sustainable seafood, and it's got a uh, really complex interactive map, which has lots and lots of different types of thing. It's got members login areas, all sorts of things. And um, thinking back how we would have done this, maybe Drupal would have been better sorted uh, because uh, WordPress is not very good at content structure in any way. There's no content structure in WordPress. And uh, the APIs are just like, this was talking to an external uh, Postgres server to get um, some data via GraphQL, all sorts of the stuff that you've heard lots of talks about. Uh, WordPress just is not great for that sort of stuff. Uh, but it works. It's there. It's OK. So uh, then we have 
uh, the Angel Shark Sightings map. So this is a really nice uh, little site where you can report sightings about they're not directly shown on the map because it's a critically endangered species, so they can't show you exactly where the animals are. But we've got bathymetric lines. We've got all sorts of fun, fun things here. It's translated into, uh, I don't know how many languages now, but it's translated into, yeah, quite a few languages. And um, the form, the scientists start adding features and they go, okay, we want to add, um, add uh, two different sightings forms and then we want to translate it into another language. And again, not sure, Drupal might be better, but it works, it's a really successful project, it's fine, let's leave it as it is. Then we plunge even further. We've got, um, we've got uh, the Conservation Leadership Program. So this runs every year, and it's a program where, um, where people sort of apply for a scheme, reviewers review their application, people look through listings, assign reviewers by profession to, uh, to an application, reviewers give feedback, all sorts of things. And uh, when showing this sort of project to someone I know who's also a developer, uh, he made fun of me for just turning WordPress into Drupal because this, we, the amount of hacking you need to do to get custom columns, all the searches and filters, it's, this should be a Drupal site. However, it works, it's really good, and it's not going anywhere. We built it in WordPress, probably would have built it in Drupal, but um, yeah, the the, the lesson learned is it's it's still okay, it still works. Then we get even more complicated. So this is Capacity for Conservation, another another WordPress website. This has uh, assessments and people organizations go fill out an assessment about how um, people within an organization feel about their management, all sorts of things anonymously. There's a, a list of tools. So if I go to resources, there's um, there's a list of resources in cards with searches, filters, type of stuff you do in views. None of this exists in WordPress. So again, it would be, uh, it would be nice to, uh, to, yeah, to have thought about that. But however, it works, it's fine. So the lesson here is uh, nobody cares what you build something with if it's good and it works. So there's lots of groaning like, oh no, I only use Drupal or I only use WordPress or Node.js or this and that. We use lots of things. Uh, we're going back to Drupal, using Drupal a lot. A lot of these projects would have been good Drupal projects. However, it, it doesn't matter. If the clients like it, if it works, doesn't matter what you use. So don't discount WordPress just because just because you're a, Word, uh, you're a Drupal developer, for things like blogging and news stories, it's, it's superior. It's much better than Drupal will ever be because that's what they do. If you're doing more complex taxonomies, want a database structure that makes any sense and doesn't just dump everything into a meta table, then um, a templating system that isn't just PHP templating, there is a Twig library you can install called Timber that's really good. But it's, yeah, so for more complex sites, definitely Drupal is a good way to go. However, um, yeah, WordPress isn't bad in some ways. So, um, the greatest things about Drupal, as I've, as I've said, is um, its structure. So the taxonomy system, uh, the flexibility that you can have, uh, putting all these um, different content types, different taxonomies, references to them, a field system. WordPress doesn't have a field system. It has a plugin called Advanced Custom Fields, which tries uh, to give WordPress a field system. But um, Drupal is, this is the best strength of Drupal. There's so many other things that Drupal does, but this is the reason you should use Drupal, is the content structure. It is just incredible, the way, the way we use it to, uh, to map, map things out, to do very complex taxonomies of things is, um, is, is really, really important. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through some, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm gonna go through some examples of sites that we built, more complex sites using Drupal, and uh, point out some of the things. I'm gonna try not to say the content structure thing so much, but you'll hear it quite a lot. It is the best thing about Drupal. We use it so much, and it's the reason we've come back to it, because it's just, it's, it's world beating, and it, no one else can catch up, because there's so many years that have been spent doing it, so uh, I don't believe anyone will ever build a system that's, that's better at it than Drupal. So that is high praise. Uh, so, um, so what we have, and next to show, I'm going to close some tabs. Um, my team will laugh at me. I do, I'm a one-tab person, so this is my nightmare. Um, but I've set them all up, so. 
Um, so what we have here is uh, the biggest site we've ever done. Um, it was a sort of year-long, two-year-long project. It was uh, really, really hard work. It's a social network, basically. It's a whole um, community site for, um, for conservation technologists. So there's a whole branch of, um, of things called conservation technology, where people use technology to solve conservation issues. So they build hardware, software, all sorts of things. Um, it's where a subset of that because we, we do digital things for conservation, but there's a whole amazing world. If you are doing tech and you want to move into uh, conservation stuff, go to this website, chat to people because there's so many projects that are doing amazing things. So, um, so what we've got here is a lot of uh, different content types, events, um, discussions, people, groups, uh, all sorts of uh, really, uh, really uh, organizations people are part of. Um, yeah, all, all sorts of things going on. We've got uh, notifications on the top, if I go here, uh, which lights up if people mention me, if people like something that I've done, if people reply to something. We've got a full-on discussion system uh, going on. So if I go to a discussion, we've got, um, yeah, people posting replies, doing all sorts of things, no notifications, subscriptions. So um, there's a lot of content types, but sometimes uh, we've got some custom entities here as well. So um, it's, it's, a, um, it's a difficult thing to work out when to do, is when to do a custom content type, uh, when to do a custom content type through just manage content, make a content type, and when to do something that is, um, that is just uh, referenced as an entity, created as an entity through the module system. So the ones we used here, I think there is some similarity between them, is subscriptions, so linking one thing to a piece of content, likes, so an emoji to, so we've got a nice little, if I see if I can uh, show an example, we've got a nice little emoji picker, um, so storing emojis on, on something, um, and so referencing what was reacted to, who reacted, what the emoji was, and um, things like notifications, so activity, when something happens on the site. Whenever something happens on the site, you have uh, a piece of activity that's created, and the activity is of various types. So we've got a, a comment was posted, a reply was posted, and that holds uh, metadata about who it was posted to, who posted it, where, what happened, that sort of thing. So a reaction would have an activity associated with it and such. And then people can subscribe to those and get a feed. Oh, I've just got Chris. Uh, someone sent me a message. OK, so someone's just sent me a message about uh, on the messaging system to prove, yeah, that's there. We built like a, a Slack-like thing inside it as well. So lovely live demo. Thank you. Um, so I didn't read what the message was. I probably should have. Um, so that is, those are really good. They're really fast. Uh, the Entity system. I would be. Don't be afraid of using custom entities. Uh, they are really powerful. There's no content. Also, another decision to use them was uh, ones where you don't want to edit them. You don't want to go in and edit someone's likes or edit someone's subscriptions. You don't need a screen to manage them. You just need a lightweight entity. So we did. We did a lot of those. Um, so other things that we did that were interesting here is uh, we did a lot of CK editor type stuff. So in C uh, so when we um, on the editing experience. So what we've got here is when you edit uh, an article. So we there's been lots of talks of inline editing that sort of thing. What we did here is made it look a bit like the actual experience when when something happens. Now uh, this isn't using quick edit or anything funny like that. It's Please don't, uh, don't hate us for how hacky this is. These are extra fields that when you type into them, populate the real fields in Drupal. So you've got a form, and then you've got these, these dummy fields at the top, and then you're writing to them. But people love it, and they can just go in, and it looks the same. So we've got CK Editor 5. We jumped into CK Editor 5 straight away, like when it was really like early, early on when we were building this project, because I saw it coming. Uh, but CK Editor 5 does, we built a mentions plugin on top of it using the, the, the mentions. We've got a nice little card hover that shows you when you hover over a card. We've got uh, the, the thing that they like the most. Um, if I go to Sneezing Panda, my favorite YouTube video. So if we go to a Sneezing Panda and we put it in, I should just have it open in the window all the time. Um, so it just embeds 
Um, it does uh, it does really really cool things. Uh, code highlighting, just anything that was CK Editor is amazing. There's lots of talk about it this uh, this time, but CK Editor five is just it's so so far along from anyone else is uh, like Tiny MCE, all the others. CK Editor four, it's a whole whole amazing beast. Uh, the team have done such a good job, and um, I, the, yeah, the Drupal Drupal stuff is really good for it as well. Um, what uh, another really uh, key part of this is search. So um, I know there's the Apache Solar for uh, for Drupal has been around for a long time. Uh, it was so easy to configure, and the client loved it so much. If you give them spell check and just related things, and you just tick buttons, uh, there's that that checkbox joke about Drupal earlier. There is so many there are so many checkboxes, and you just read it and you do them. The one that stung us so much and we couldn't work it out for like hours was there's a checkbox which is a like a double negative. It's like list all the types you want to exclude rather than include. It's like, why is it not working? And you just need to read the page. So it's, but there's, uh, Drupal loves doing that sort of stuff. Or hide something in advanced settings somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Uh, so we've done lots of Apache Solar stuff on here. It's out of the box. We didn't write any special code. We just um, installed some extra modules, and it's it's beautiful. It's really fast, and it's and the client just loves it, um, and the community loves it. Um, so uh, as you can probably tell, this is a really like there's a lot going on on the site, especially on the home page. When we were about to launch, performance was absolutely dreadful. So it was really, really hard to do. It was we didn't know what to do. And um, there was an amazing talk yesterday about performance that get the slides because the yeah speaker is a genius and it's just so much stuff that we're not even touching. But one thing we did to solve this one is uh, profiling. So. I installed xhprof and I ran through the whole site and worked out what was the slow functions. And within an afternoon, the site was 90% quicker. It was just, it's its a really useful tool. I think there are, there was that, bl is it black drop or the, the the other thing that makes it easier to do? I wish that's, that's really good because that means less setup and more developers can get involved in this because it was just, it opened, uh, it just made you aware what was slow. Now, uh, a big lesson in slowness and, um, and Drupal all the bits of code that were slow were us trying to do things that Drupal does out of the box and just hacking around things. And if you do things the Drupal way, then the caching kicks in, it does things really nicely, and it was all our weird pre-processes and all sorts of things that were, were slowing things down. But we got it fast, it was, it was really nice. So um, one final thing on this site uh, that I want to mention is, because. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay, um, is uh, that we did lots of JavaScript stuff. So we did lots of things like the notifications, that sort of that sort of thing. And now I'm a JavaScript developer. I love my JavaScript. Um, that is like an area of expertise. So I spend ages trying to get Drupal to do all sorts of JavaScript stuff. I've always, because of jQuery UI and all sorts of this weird thing in Drupal, I've always ignored the Drupal JavaScript stuff because I just thought it was going to be terrible. Um, what happened was I was doing our Ajax notifications and, sorry, Ajax discussions, like trying to update live update discussions, uh, scroll to the relevant bit, and I was just in the office until about 2 a.m. and I just couldn't get it working. And then I just gave up, saw in the corner of my eye, the Drupal, like Drupal 9 developer book. And I thought, let's just read the Ajax chapter. Two paragraphs in, solved everything. So uh, so please uh, please know there are APIs available that, uh, that do stuff very well. Um, so moving on to uh, another site. So this is a um, sourcing, sourcing transparency platform. It's about sustainable tuna. Uh, what we've got here is uh, databases of species. We've got uh, pages for species. So if I go through here, we've got um, a nice little carousel. Uh, we've got uh, lots of maps, lots of information. So, so many uh, different uh, fields, taxonomies, all sorts of things. We've got um, a database of fisheries. Um, Da, 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 da. We've got, yeah, where the fisheries are, various regions that you can do, um, all, all sorts of things like that. Databases of tuna products um, in different types. And uh, I mentioned structure, Drupal, the best platform for this sort of stuff. There are so many complex taxonomies, uh, so many things like uh, we've got on, uh, if I go to companies, we've got things like, uh, if I go to brands, little distribution arrows as to where one person comes from the others. They're just entity references, and then we can map them using a JSON, JSON feed. Um, this, uh, this structure is as 
I'm going as I'm going along, you're going to see more and more uh, complex taxonomies. This is a um, there. There are so many different types of vocabulary, nested ones, really complex things. But the client understands it, and they're managing some of this stuff, and it's it's really good. Drupal is perfect for this sort of site. It's uh, it's amazing. It's really really good. Also, the members log in, they edit their pages, that sort of thing. So uh, so this is uh, this is a really really good uh, use case for the type of thing that we really use Drupal a lot with. So. Uh, moving on to something where it's almost always the database, so almost just entirely the database. So this is a very simple front end, but what it is is assessments on um, certain endangered species. So this is where that forest elephant issue comes in. Uh, lots of weird edge cases, lots of uh, scraping of historical data going back hundreds of years or 100 years. And uh, we spent three years on this project. It doesn't look like a project you spent three years on, but it was all CSV imports. So it was all just matching a CSV to something, changing the data structure. Data structure is essential when doing these sort of things. And if you spend a lot of time on it, you get it right. It's And Drupal's perfect for prototyping this stuff. So creating, um, creating fields, um, testing things out, creating forms, creating views. It's, it's wonderful. So one little Drupal trick, uh, I, was asked, I went to the geolocation um, boff the other day, and people were asking about sort of how you do views and maps together. We don't use any geolocation stuff in Drupal. Uh, what we do is um, I do a views attachment, which is uh, a cheating thing which is hidden in CSS on the page and then is read by the map so that when you update the view, you update the you update the feed at the same time. There's probably better ways of doing it, but uh, it just passes everything to the client side, keeps the filters the same, and filters the map at the same time as it filters everything else. We've used that on so many projects, and it's um, it's getting JSON feeds syncing with the views filters is quite difficult. So we just pump the JSON to the um, to the serve, to the client side and read it there. Um, a very similar website is uh, this, again, looks very simple. This is uh, a database of sustainable use of, of species. So what we have here is, if I just, um, yeah, what we have here is how species are used, uh, all sorts of things there about which, which species they are, what the use is for. Again, this is a view, very, very simple. The database part was the hard bit. So an interesting lesson here is if you go to con con contribute record, we've got a very complex form. Now, web form would have been brilliant for this. But we wanted structured data. So there's a really, because Drupal's so good at structured data, because we wanted to export it out, we ended up having to use the entity system and the s normal magic managed fields, which is very behind what Webform are doing, to, to do this, these forms and things, it's just so that the naming was right, everything could be exported. So, um, so the, the structure is really the, the most important thing that draws us to Drupal, especially working with scientists to do sites like this. It's, um, it's, a, it's an uh, essential thing. So again, importing data into both these red list applications and, and this one here, lots of CSV importing. Drupal's entity system worked wonderfully. There's no need to use like feeds or anything like that. Just go through a, um, a CSV, import a Symfony CSV tool or, or, or such, and just go through the entity API in Drupal. It's, it's amazing, it's really good. Uh, we're doing a, a massive database of seabird um, tracking at the moment, so Chris, my colleague, has been working on this, importing uh, loads of records, or many, many thousands of records from a Postgres database, and it's just, yeah, Drupal is amazing at this stuff. Um, so. Uh, a similar project, so what we've got here is another interactive map. This is basically a single page app. Um, I'm gonna just refresh. This is about um, all sorts of layers about a certain region of ocean. Um, so what we have is, I'm just gonna, there's this weird um, thing going on there. Um, what we have is um, marine uses like wind farms, oil wells, so we've got um, Oh, look at all the oil wells. Isn't that great, what we're doing for the environment? Um, and um, we've got uh, really interesting things like over here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Not going to be able to find it now. This is, um, no, maybe not. Is it here? Oh, here we go. Um, um, I'm going to zoom in. There we go. So this is um, chemical weapons being dumped into the sea. Um, so this is like all the little, oh look, they look like nice points. And then you read that um, it was a ship that, um, yeah, basically lost lots of its stuff. And there's, yeah, unknown, 
an unknown quantity of chemical weapons just sitting in the ocean. Um, so what we've done here, this is lots of Mapbox stuff. So Mapbox is a, um, is a, a piece of software that um, allows you to manage layers and um, map, mapping things. We do lots with it. And uh, what we've got here, again, is lots and lots of taxonomies, lots of uh, subsets of things. All the menus are generated, uh, generated by that. Um, so uh, what else would I... What was I going to mention? I've got five minutes, and we were going to do some questions, but probably not. Um, what was I going to mention? So we've got uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, a website which is a uh, bird migration site. It's got a, a, a map of bird migrations, people, citizen science. Now, the tricky thing here is it's translated into all these languages. Drupal did really well, but it's not just translations. Each site has different content as well. So share some of the content. Drupal's groups module, really good. Translations module, really good. But this was a uh, difficult undertaking. So uh, that I'm just going to run through that one quickly. Another, uh, the final thing that I was going to mention is uh, that uh, we worked on some hardware um, things. So this is a satellite connected network of, of camera traps. And um, what we do is we built the tool that uh, it receives the images, does lots of dashboards, lots of filtering, lots of reporting. Again, Drupal, amazing for this sort of stuff. Sometimes not used to make dashboards. It's brilliant for dashboards. The scientists love it. They can add fields, uh, do all sorts of things there. So a key part of um, this site, this, this, this system here, is um, the configuration that we, um, that we allowed the, the user to do. So there was lots of um, clicking buttons to, to configure things through JSON files, through Drupal config, and all sorts of things. We did a similar thing on a turtle tagging project where we built an open source tool. Um, this was um, to generate interfaces for managing any type of conservation hardware. And again, config, type of device, which form fields, really good to, to generate things like that. So we had, this is leading somewhere, we had another project that we worked on, which is uh, another mapping project, which has uh, some really interesting uh, mapping data about regions in Canada over time, um, all sorts of things like that. All of this whole interface is generated from a single YAML file that the scientists edit, and they plug into their Python application. So scientists love this configuration, really, really, really powerful. So, uh, which brings me on to my final point. Uh, da, 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 da. Flexible configuration will make people fall in love with the sites they are looking after. So. Those checkboxes that we talked about, though that feeling I had when I built the membership system, using rules, using all that site building stuff, you can give it to clients, you can, you can do all that config, and they'll love it. If they have full control over a system, which Drupal lets you do, then it's, it's amazing. Uh, so don't hard code things, just add checkboxes, add config pages is an amazing module in Drupal that lets you do this sort of stuff. It's brilliant. So um, final point, because I am running out of time, we do lots of good stuff for tech. Um, I see lots of people doing bad stuff for tech. So there is no excuse at all to build evil technology or work with people who do. Stop it, OK? <laughs> just, just don't do it. Because, um, yeah, you, you, you can do well with this stuff. There are so many opportunities. As I said, the Wild Lab site, conservation technology, other tech for good stuff. Just don't do tech for bad. It doesn't matter if it's tech for mediocre. That's OK. But there's so much tech for bad stuff going on. Just. Yeah, and yeah, I won't mention companies, but there's some awful stuff going on. So, yeah, uh, that's me. Uh, we're uh, we're Octafin. I've been Philip Nest. Um, you can find me on Twitter, but I just post about Taylor Swift and music stuff. So there's almost no point following me there. But please, uh, please just email me. Talk to us. We'll share any code, anything that you want to look through. And a little plug for my very good friend. Um, Anna, who did all these illustrations, designed our logo. She's a pattern clothing designer in the Czech Republic, and she's under an anemone. So find her on Etsy. She's amazing.
So inspiring talk, um, especially about all the like performance stuff you did and saying that you should use or make custom entities and that kind of thing. Does that mean that you like, for example, for because I see for the activities you use custom entities. So do you uh, use contract modules not we, as we much? We, there was a there's a oh, there are contract modules for 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 doing things like um, activity and that sort of thing. We looked at them and they seem to be very bloated with lots and lots of things. So I would say for contract people making things, make lightweight modules which then get extended with other things so that you don't have to install it and it comes with a messaging system and all this other stuff. Emails just just. Keep it lightweight, I think that would be. We did use lots of contrib modules like groups. Uh, the Wild Lab site and the Springer Live site would not be possible without the groups module. Lots and lots of uh, less contrib modules than I used to use because Drupal 8, 9, 10 is amazing, but uh, still, uh, still use some, but the lightweight ones usually. Yeah, okay, thank you. Anyone else? Um, when you've got observation data, um, do you sometimes use external databases? Uh, yeah, so we sometimes use, so for the bird tracking uh, information we're using at the moment, we use a post -GIS, we're going to possibly use a PostGIS server for that because it's just so much better at man managing geolocation. Uh, Drupal, there was an interesting talk about um, the, the chat, the boff about geolocation. Drupal only has certain field types, so it's not going to do a polygon or not going to do point data in the, spe in the specific way very well so that it's compatible with all the databases Drupal supports. So sometimes you do need to use, um, use that. Is that like the, for the geolocational stuff, is that what you're asking about? Well, um, sometimes I work for people, for scientists yeah. who already have uh, strange databases. You have to query manually, I, I mean, uh, you have to, to query data to write SQL and it's really annoying yeah. and you end up you know, not using cache. And, uh, so I then end up uh, thinking that external entities is a wonderful module in that area. Yeah, so I, I think we're using a, a second database feed could uh, could could maybe work. Um, also, putting it in an index server, something like Solar in between, so that you're indexing it every now and then, reading from it, and then just updating it all uh, every now and then. That's also possible. Um, it's a it's a tricky thing, but yeah, sometimes using multiple databases, just treat the other database as an API, maybe. That's um, and. Uh, make a, we use the um, we use GraphQL on one of these databases to to give a feed that Drupal could read. So, anyone else? Oh. Okay. Uh, feel free to talk to any of us. Uh, we are open to any questions and such. So, and check out some of these projects. Thank you.